I am back with another video for you with new stories from Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia and Taiwan as well. Breaking news is from Taiwan. US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will visit Taiwan. Tensions are running high between China and US. US is moving its military assets close to Taiwan and a Chinese People Liberation Army just a few minutes ago released a new video showing Chinese military assets. Nancy Pelosi departed uh, uh, US uh, a few uh, hours ago, I think yesterday, then on Monday she arrived in Singapore. Now she's planning to visit uh, Taiwan, we have details for you. Secondly, at last, uh, Somalia's Prime Minister Hamza Abdibare is about to announce his cabinet. He was elected uh, PM more than a month ago. Cabinet has been finalized. One name is circulating that this man could be uh, a minister and he is a controversial figure. His name is Mukhtar Robo. Uh, journalists have been uh, invited. So in coming hours, we could see announcement of Somalia's uh, uh, federal cabinet. Meanwhile, a region has formed a cabinet as well with 80 ministers. Thirdly, we have a new story about Amhara activists' hunger strike ongoing in London. Now, a protest is being planned in London. Uh, fourthly, a new story from the US where Oromo Studies Association held a two-day conference about issues related to the people of Oromia. Uh, Self-determination was the topic of discussions and there a professor, a well-known author and writer spoke about uh, an end to colonization of uh, Oromia and uh, an end to Ethiopianism. What did he say? And lastly, the Tigrayan and Eritrean festivals have come to an end in Stockholm, Sweden. Eritrean festival was a major event. Uh, thousands participated. Reportedly, Abul Said, famous Eritrean poet, performed there. What did he say? Where is he now? Opposition groups uh, offered him support if he was willing to defect. What did he say? We have details for you. Firstly, viewers. U.S.-China tensions are running high, all-time high, you can say. Nancy Pelosi, U.S. House Speaker, arrived in Singapore today. She announced to visit four countries, Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, uh, Japan, uh, and Taiwan was not part of her uh, uh, itinerary, uh, but uh, TVBS, which is a Taiwanese news source, is reporting that on Tuesday night, Nancy Pelosi will arrive in Taiwan, in Taipei, Taiwanese capital. We know that China has been warning US that Nancy Pelosi must not visit Taiwan, otherwise all options are available including military options and just a few days ago Chinese military conducted maneuvers, uh, uh, naval maneuvers close to Taiwanese coast. Uh, it was a message from China to Taiwan to US that Nancy Pelosi must not visit Taiwan. Taiwan is a self-declared country, self-ruled island. Uh, China sees Taiwan as part of China uh, and Taiwan is unrecognized by most of uh, countries of the world. Now, tensions there, viewers. Meanwhile, US is mobilizing, it's moving its military assets close to Taiwanese coast. That has been confirmed by several sources. Uh, 
and US and some other countries, they have started military maneuvers in South China Sea today involving 4,000 Marines. The countries are Australia, US, uh, Singapore, Indonesia. These countries uh, have launched military maneuvers. Uh, so several things are happening in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, while Nancy Pelosi is due to visit uh, Taiwan, CNN has also confirmed that Nancy Pelosi will visit Taiwan. Question is, if it happens, what will China do? Will China try to stop Nancy Pelosi's visit? How will it try to stop it militarily or through some other means? Tension there. Meanwhile, Chinese People's Liberation Army just uh, two hours ago released a new video showing military preparation, military capabilities of Chinese People's Liberation Army. Watch this video. We'll keep you updated about this uh, new conflict. Uh, uh, we know that uh, Russia warned against NATO's expansion close to Russia against US-led US -led NATO's expansion into neighboring countries. Uh, US did not listen. Uh, NATO kept on expanding and ultimately we saw start of Russia-Ukraine conflict. Russia invaded Ukraine in February and now Americans are getting close to Taiwan and China is warning US. Are we heading towards another global conflict? Let's see. Watch this video shared by Chinese People Liberation Army. Secondly, we are Somalia. At last, Somalia's PM Hamza Abdibare, chosen by the President uh, Hassan Sheikh Mahmood, is going to have a cabinet. Uh, list has been finalized reportedly after consultation between the President and the PM. According to some news sources, a controversial figure is going to be a minister. His name is Mukhtar Robo Al Abu Al Mansur. He is former deputy commander of Al Shabab. He defected. Then he entered politics and he decided to run for president of Southwest State of Somalia. Southwest State of Somalia is being led by President Laftagarin, who is an ally of previous President Farmajo. And uh, uh, Mukhtar Robo was not allowed to contest election. Rather, in 2018, he was arrested. He was put under house arrest. Nisa put him under house arrest. Since then, he's been under house arrest in Badwa, in southwest regional state of Somalia, where he has huge following. Hassan Shea government is not on good terms with southwest president Lafta Garin, who is seen as Farmajo's ally. Can uh, Mukhtar Robo be a minister who is under house arrest? Let's see. He was under house arrest when Farmajo was in power, but uh, maybe in coming days he might uh, have been uh, out of this uh, house arrest uh, because now Nisa is being led by Mahat Salad. Uh, earlier head of Nisa was uh, pro Farmajo Fahad Yasin. In coming hours, uh, we'll share with you details of new cabinet of Somalia's PM uh, Hamza Abdibara. Meanwhile, 
Harsha Bale, a regional state of Somalia, has formed a cabinet uh, after a delay of around one and a half years. A huge cabinet, 80 member cabinet, was announced today by this regional federal member state of Somalia. 27 ministers, 26 uh, state ministers, and 27 deputy ministers. 80 ministers are part of this cabinet of Harsha Bale. Uh, region. Uh, if you, Somalia, a poor country facing shortage of resources, countering drought, grappling with uh, insurgency. You see that one region has 80 ministers. So if you combine all regions, all their ministers, you see how much is being spent on the ruling elite in Somalia. Thirdly, we have a new story about uh, a hunger strike started by some Amhara activists in London around two weeks ago. Today is day 13 of this hunger strike. Judith Gideon, who is uh, uh, head of an NGO, Stop Amhara Genocide NGO, is on hunger strike. Uh, she was taken to a hospital as well to receive emergency medical treatment two days ago. Then she has returned once again on 10 Downing Street where she is on hunger strike. And there on 10 Downing Street reportedly, on, on Downing Street reportedly, uh, now a demonstration is being planned that no one is uh, uh, taking notice of uh, uh, this hunger strike of uh, Yudith Gideon, that is why on a Wednesday a protest will be held. Demand to stop being indifferent is the slogan which is being shared by those who are uh, running a campaign for this upcoming protest on Wednesday. So ethnic Amharas are protesting, they say that they are Ethnic group members in Ethiopia are being killed. The genocide is being committed in Oromia and other parts of Ethiopia. Ethnic Amharas are under repression, thousands in detention, and hundreds have died in recent uh, weeks in Ethiopia. Uh, fourthly, we have a new story about uh, an author, a writer, diaspora member from Romia based in the US. His name is Professor Asafa Jalata. Yesterday he spoke at OSA conference, Romo Studies Association held a two-day conference in the US. Jawar was not invited, Bakle Garba was invited. Yesterday, Professor Asafa Jalata was invited as well. He is a professor, a teacher, an author, a writer, and he is a champion of Romoma. Liberation of Romia uh, is uh, his uh, slogan. He's been working for years uh, for Romoma. And there he spoke at this uh, conference a few hours ago. His speech is being quoted. His remarks are being quoted. What did he say? He said, decolonization of Oromia and uh, an end to Ethiopianism are uh, essential for liberation of the people of Oromia. So he is of this opinion that Oromia is colonized, that Ethiopianism is against Oromianism. For Oromoma, there must be an end to Ethiopianism. He is calling for secession of Oromia, that Oromia should be an independent country, uh, like Tigray and Aspa community wants an independent Tigray country. If you start creating states along ethnic lines, where will it end? Tigrayans will have Tigray, Romos will have uh, Oromia, Amharas will have uh, Amhara. What about Gomas, uh, Bartha, Somali, Afat? How many countries do you want to create in Ethiopia, in the Horn of Africa? That is why uh, creation of new states uh, is not backed by any power, world power, even regional countries as well, Kenya uh, and other countries. Because if you start creating countries along ethnic lines, it will have a shock wave.
in the entire horn of Africa, in neighboring countries, in East Africa as well. It will not stop them. Uh, but Professor Asafa Jalata is a champion of Oromoma. Uh, he is a champion of liberation of uh, Oromo people. Though Oromos are in power in Ethiopia these days, in top positions there are Oromos. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, top command of uh, Ethiopian National Defense Force, uh, ministers, uh, PMRB, there are top uh, Romos, uh, Romos in top positions in Ethiopia these days. But still, uh, champions of Romoma think that Romoma is the only solution to the problems faced by the people of Romia. We are hearing similar voices in Amhara as well now that uh, after the start of this crackdown on uh, Fano or militia, now people are starting to speak for a separate Amhara country. So that is why. Where will it stop? Uh, lastly, uh, in Stockholm, Sweden, Tegarians and Eretians uh, held uh, festivals. Eretian diaspora festival was a major event. Thousands participated. Uh, I will say the Eretian poet travelled from Asmara to take part to perform at this program. His poetry is basically a political speech. He spoke about Americans, about American shock differs in uh, Eretia, former one uh, who uh, has completed his term, according to the, the person Stephen Walker. Uh, he criticized him. He said that he uh, that Eretia booted out Stephen Walker. He spoke about U.S. intervention in Syria, in Iraq as well. So his poetry, his speech was a political speech, but people like him, the pro-government, pro-Eretian government, uh, uh, Eretians, diaspora community members, they like him. Overall, Eretian diaspora festival in Stockholm was well organized, though they had to change uh, the venue at the last minute. Uh, they had to make some organizers, they, they had to make some makeshift preparations. Despite the obstacles created by some Eretian opposition groups, they managed this uh, festival in a very impressive manner. I will say this still uh, in Europe. He was reportedly he is traveling from uh, Stockholm to the Netherlands. Uh, there he is expected to participate in another program there. He was offered by some Eritrean diaspora groups that uh, the groups will support him if he is ready to defect, if he is ready to seek asylum in any European country, but his reply was that he wanted to talk to those who have defected and he wants to take them back to Eritrea. So he is uh, hand in glove with the Eritrean government. He was seen with the Saya Sehwaki Eritrean president before he left uh, Asmara for this festival. I will say the face the anger of some Eritrean diaspora members as well. A video is being shared, I'm not going to show you this video. Uh, some uh, women uh, can be heard hurling insults at uh, Abul Said in uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, Tigrayans also held a festival there, organized a festival in Stockholm, Sweden, a smaller one in comparison with Irrit Industrial Festival. But overall, it was also well organized. Uh, now, all eyes are on uh, the festival, Eritrean festival, would start in Dallas, uh, which is being opposed by Eritrean opposition diaspora groups in the US. Let's see what happens. Thank you for watching.